Well, good evening. Good to see you tonight. Glad you have joined with us for this evening's service. We're looking forward to what God has in store for us. I trust we all will just be ready and willing and open to what the Lord would have for this service. Yes. Amen. Are you glad you're here? Amen. Oh, I've got a few. <laughs> Thank the Lord. <laughs> Good to see you. Uh, I guess almost all of you know that we, uh, we kicked the Steppers out in the Strouds for, for a week. They're gone for a week to enjoy a week. And this is part of the 25th anniversary gift <clears throat> excuse me that the church and y'all have provided and this was the time they scheduled for all their family to be together daryl sent me a picture this afternoon and man they were looking awfully good just nice and relaxed just like grandma and grandpa's get when their grandkids are around and i'm sure they're having a wonderful time let's pray for their safety pray for their traveling back when they when it's over that they get back safely and we're looking forward to hearing the good news of the wonderful time that they had together. But in the meantime, we're here and we're ready to worship yes. the Lord and join together. And I trust that we'll do just that. Let's ask him for his presence. Father, we thank you that we can be in this service tonight. We're thankful, Lord, that we can gather with this dear body of believers. We pray that you'd encourage each and every one of them. Lord, go amongst the pews tonight. Every heart that's represented here, may they feel and sense the power of God. We ask that you would touch, Lord, and anoint in the singing, anoint in the testimonies, and touch our dear brother Witt as he shares the word of God. We just ask that you would come in a mighty way. We know that you're able to do that, and we're trusting you for it. And we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. It's coming. It's going to lead us in the singing. start with number 268, Holy Spirit be my guide. Jesus, before he left earth, promised to send a comforter to us, and ever since then, every generation has needed that. And we are no exception. I know I need the filling of the Spirit continually every day, and I know us, we as a church need it desperately to be a difference to this world. So let's sing this song and invite God to come to meet with us.
211, and I think this song goes right along with the first one we sing. And I don't know if anyone, I don't think we've ever sang this song here before. So if you don't know it, uh, or if you do know it, help me out a lot here. So uh, we'll, we'll give it a shot there, and hopefully you all know this song. <laughs>
thank you, Brother Anthony. I thought those songs went together quite well. I appreciate him bringing those songs to our attention and us singing them tonight. And that first one is a very precious song. As you think about and read those words about how intense it gets in regards to the holiness teaching and the holiness doctrine that we believe. And I'm so thankful that Brother Anthony, you sang that tonight. That song is a song that our young people need to hear. And we all need to hear that once in a while. And of course, the soul, the soul being set free is a wonderful song. Thank you for leaving that one to appreciate your reference tonight. All right, as we had said earlier, we're so thankful that you're with us. And as we prepare to our hearts to go to before the throne of grace, let's ask the Lord to help and meet our needs. And Brother Cooper, would you read us in prayer tonight? I think perhaps you have seen many of the requests that we in the bulletin. Perhaps we can look and review those kind of quickly. And also those that were shared uh, by Brother Brother Stroud that sent us text to remind us of those particular requests. Let's remember Brother Mike Geary as he is in rehab and being quarantined for two weeks. Let's uh, if you get a chance to call him, Brother, Brother Tim called him today, and I'm so glad he was able to do that. Many other, others of us need to do that to encourage our brother. So let's keep praying for Brother Mike. Uh, he's got a long road of recovery. And so let's, let's not forget our brother. Let's keep praying for him and do what we can to try to brighten his days. For my sister Sherry, she, she did uh, injure her back, and let's continue to pray for her sister Sherry Wakanoli. And her brother, her also, <clears throat> let's continue to remember him having COVID and also pneumonia. GBS is battling with this, and let's continue to remember those that, are, that have been afflicted with it. I'm thankful that the Lord has touched Tyler and Kay's one day, or it seemed to be doing better. Uh, but uh, they just finished their quarantine as of yesterday, but they wanted to just be sure and stay in today, and they're going to try to get back to normal tomorrow. So, so thankful for the Lord's help for them. Obviously, you have you, those that you've been praying for. Let's continue to do that. And remember those who pray. Also, those in, in Honduras that have been affected by the storm there, let's continue to pray for them. The Meltons need our prayer. God bless them. And let's continue to keep them on our hearts and minds. Any of you have any requests that you would like to share tonight? Yes. Shelbyville Church has also. almost every Sunday, but this Sunday we need to really do it, don't you think? I mean, we really need to remember our nation. Lord help us to we just need the touch of God. Yes. Thank 
you further. Let's be standing for prayer tonight, Brother Cooper will lead us. Let's join with him in prayer tonight. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to thee in prayer. We can approach thee at any time. We can come to thee and we can, no matter what our particular the thing that affects us, the thing that, that, that concerns us, Lord, we have a God who's willing to hear, a God who's willing to do, to invite us to come to Him. Lord, we pray tonight that thou should hear our prayers, that thou should undertake for the place of life, for His long road to recovery. Lord, we, we know that Satan will try to get us of, of discouragement and time of, of the setting of, of, of the concerns of the spiritual influence. Lord, we're praying. We're praying that you would choose us as a time of peace and a time of growth for him, a time that thou would strengthen him and, and the Lord that thou would help him medically through this situation and the rehab that is necessary to bring him to this house work and accomplish thy purpose. We can pray for Sherry as well. Lord, that thou would help her speak healing, that thou would give her caretakers the, the wisdom and direction that they need. Help them. Lord, we just ask that thou would help in each of these. Yes. And then, Lord, we know that we're hearing the number that are churches as individuals that are affected by the COVID. Father, we're asking that thou would help these prayers. We do that tonight. We minister to them. Be a presence to the families who have been a lot. Lord, we pray that thou would uh, just yes, reach yes. down and help them, that thou would help oh, each, each one, that thou would put such bodies, that thou would uh, heal. Yes, yes. If it be thy will, Lord, we're coming to thee asking that thou would oh, God. Uh, and do great things and do it for thy glory. Yes. Lord, we do pray for our nation. We pray to the Please, Lord for the. The, uh, you know the, needs. the situation thou knowest, oh God, thou knowest God, each God, case. Lord, Father, we're praying that thou Lord, would we give thanks for those who, who are God, trying to stand and want to do righteously. Father, we're asking that thou would strengthen them, that thou would uh, undertake and touch every uh, area of the, of the government that is, where it's necessary to accomplish thy will. Lord, yes, we're asking yes. that thou would just intervene. You would uh, help us. You would just, uh, just uh, defeat Satan, defeat evil, those who, who just hate thee and hate thy word and hate Christians and hate everything about it. And Father, we we're doing all that we know to do. This is bigger than us, but we're coming to a God that is able to do it. We're able to continue to pray. The Lord would pray the thousands Oh, Help us as a people. Please. May we be strengthened yes. in yes. thee. May we have an increased determination oh, that Jesus. we're going to follow thee Maybe and let so you rule so in our hearts and accomplish things in our hearts. Guide us with thy Holy Spirit. Yes. As the song said, be our guide. Yes. Yes. Now, Lord, we pray for this service. We're asking for thy blessing. Yes. The yes. 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 Help us. But most of all, Lord, may we sense thy presence. Let no heart go out of here that does not recognize the yes. fact that the Holy Spirit is here. Do it for Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Cooper, for leading us to the throne of grace. Praise the Lord. It's always good to have a wonderful time of prayer, isn't it? You can just feel like we've touched the throne. You need to do that once in a while. We all need to do that. So thankful when that happens. Bless us now. Well, we come to the part of the service that uh, we'd like to hear from you. We'd like to hear some testimony or perhaps you have something on your heart you would like to share. We would like to hear from you right now. Right now. Praise the Lord. I believe you do. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Anyone else? Thank you. Praise God. Greg, I want to stand and thank the Lord for yes. his help through this week. It's been a rough week and there's been some things uh, that I've had to lean on him for. And I'm thankful Absolutely. that he's always there. <laughs> he always cares and he always comes through. And even in this uncertain time where we don't know what the future holds you know i'm so yes. thankful for the knowledge that he holds the future Amen. nothing takes him by surprise and i'm so thankful that that he he cares enough it's hard to understand how he created the world and the universe and and the power that we can't even imagine yes. but yet he cares about our day-to-day -day walk and i love him yes. more than i thank him so much for his many many blessings Amen. thank you brother dave Praise God. Anyone else tonight? Amen, brother. It, it seems kind of humorous to me sometimes when I look back. Oh, with the, the times in the world when I was growing, when I was particularly a young Christian when I was growing, that there were times that, you know, this is how Satan works. There were times I thought, this thing or that thing was too little a thing to bother God with. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it was a big thing, well outside the control of man, and it's sort of like, why would God want to do that? Why does he, you know, it, it, when Jesus walked the earth, he healed people, he touched people, he physically mm -hmm. was able to restore um, <clears throat> limbs that were not functioning. But, you know, it's sort of, it's sort of like Satan was saying, you know, but he doesn't do that today. He, there, 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 those things just don't happen. But I'm glad to tell you that I followed the Lord, and it took a while to get through to me, but he is the God who's interested Absolutely. in the little things. Yes. Yes. And yes. the big thing. Thank God. Amen. And we should not despair. Yes. Yes. Just sometimes we get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. But in these days of uncertainty, the thing that is certain is our Savior, the one we know, the yes, one, sir, we have, the one who it. leads <clears throat> us, the one who has a plan for your life and mine, mm -hmm. the one who, who, who is not taken surprise. It's not like he has to sit down and say, well, what am I going to do about this now that they've done that? That's not, he knows, but this word on, he seems to know. I think he, I believe he knows. Yes. I believe, <clears throat> Absolutely. I believe he had the plan and he knew, I think he knew about each of us that was ever to come along yes. before, before he even did the creation week. Mm -hmm. Now that's just my notion, and I can't exactly prove it from scripture, but if it isn't true, he can straighten me out later. But I, I tell you what, I'd rather give him the praise and the glory for recognizing who he is. And we and he can help us in these days. And sometimes our problems are big or sometimes they're little. I'm thankful for one thing, that with the change of man, Joyce has been able to attend church. Absolutely, yes. Now we go in tomorrow and about to see the cardiologist and see what he has to say about it. So I don't know whether it'll result in another change or not. But my trust. Yes. Is in yes, sir. Is, is in the one, Absolutely. the one who has saved me, the one who has sanctified me, mm -hmm. the one who has led me, yes. the one whose blood provides for us, and the church would not exist if it had not been for Jesus Christ. True. Right. And we we can just have that confidence that in times of uncertainty, we're here, and He has a plan for us and a usefulness for us. Whatever that is, yeah. I just want to praise him for that. Good. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. I think your brother Marvin and brother Dave, or probably both of them, have, are speaking our, all of our hearts for this week. You know, I think we all have felt tested, should we say. But I appreciate both of these testimonies of the fact that they're, they're coming out on top. They're coming out on the point that they're going to believe God. They're going to believe his ability, and, and we all need to do the same. You know, even in the difficult times, we know that the Lord can help. And somehow, when we can't see the way, He knows the way, and He knows exactly 
what needs to happen now, even though we don't many times. So thank you. And you can rely on that tonight. Bless his name. Thank you, brothers. Anyone else want to give some praise tonight? Yes, go ahead, Nathan. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. Yes. Appreciate these, your own testimonies. We have another one back there. Gracie. I said, oh, okay, I thought maybe you were good. Amen. All right. Do you have a testimony? Would you like to hear it? Absolutely. There we go. <laughs> good one. God bless you. All right. Anyone else? Yes. Go right ahead. Absolutely. I believe you do. Yes. Yes. Amen. Should we finish that roll out there? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Good job. Good job, girl. Thank you so much for testifying. You'll go home feeling better that you testify. Amen. All right. Testimonies, don't you? Yeah. Lots of good, wonderful lessons from giving you these tonight. And thank you for sharing all of these, all of you that have. <laughs> Praise God. Anyone else want to cut anybody off? Please. It's open to you if you feel like you would like to share. All right, we're going to hear from the Lyle Witt family. She's going to give us a special. I would have saw it tonight, and I would bless them and bring minister. Amen. Testimonies have alluded to this already, but I'm thankful that in times like these, we can live 
with confidence in the one who holds tomorrow. And that's what our song is about today.
Brother Witt's going to come. We love Brother Witt dearly, don't we? Just so thankful for the Witt family, Brother Witt and his son. It's just been such a wonderful addition to our church. And Brother Lonnie, he's just a wonderful man of God, and we appreciate him. Amen. Yes, Lord, will anoint him as he comes and shares with us tonight. May God's blessing be on the Lord tonight. gotten old enough that I realized that sometimes we say we're going to pray about something and then uh, we don't do it right then. We don't get right to it. And so that's why I did that. I just thought, hey, let's, let's just pray for this family right there. Um, I'm also getting old enough that uh, I'm feeling this thing of my uh, friends and colleagues going to heaven. When I went to Kansas City College and Bible School, my dorm room was between two brothers, twins, Eldon on one side and Edwin on the other side. And uh, unfortunately, my paths have not crossed really since college days for those uh, men, but um, traveled with Edwin, or Eldon, I should say, uh, many times. Christian service organization, and uh, Edwin, Edwin gave me a lot of trouble. He, uh, he knew I was not going to be qualified to be a missionary. He found many flaws in my life, and, uh, and uh, one thing, uh, I sort of resented wearing a jacket in hot weather, and he said, um, how are you ever going to be a missionary if you won't wear a jacket in hot weather? I said, well, when I get to that point, I think I did, and I rotted out a lot of suits in the tropics. They just, they just don't last very long. But uh, 
has some wonderful memories out of me. Manners brothers, and I know that might have been kind of a downer to say that about Eldon, but uh, uh, we uh, we teased each other a great deal, Eldon and I, and Edwin lived on the other side of me, and uh, they were interesting people and uh, very brainy and worked extremely hard to make the top grades, and uh, I'm sure God has used them. And I was thinking the other day, I don't know what it's going to be like in heaven, and you don't either, but your imagination probably works like mine. I'd like to think there'll be a big front porch somewhere with two or three or a lot of white rocking chairs, and I'd like to just uh, stop and uh, visit with people like Eldon and Edwin that I really didn't have any uh, contact with for these, how many years now? 50 almost. But um, maybe that will happen, and I trust that we'll get to uh, to fellowship in that vein. I, I was thinking about uh, this uh, situation that we're in in our world, and I don't have a message about that this evening. In fact, you're going to think, where did you get what you got? And I think you got from the Lord. But I did want to make a couple of comments. Uh, you know, back when... Uh, Lord was going to rain judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, the Lord talked with Abraham and so on. And one of the things that uh, comes out of that are these words, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And I think concerning our current situation, the Lord's going to do right. And no matter who how things will turn. He's going to have grace to get us through with whatever we face. And we need to remember that in the darkest hours of history, God's people always had a light to shine into the darkness. And uh, we need to think about that. And we may have we may have ministry that we've never thought we would have. And uh, we just need to trust him. And then you go to another scripture, and I've held on to this all during this uh, political thing that's been going on. But in Daniel 5, you remember the judgment of God, the handwriting on the wall, and all of those things. And uh, in a verse, in that good chapter, the 19th verse, actually, it says concerning uh, the Lord. He would set, let me read the whole verse. I think that would be better. And for the majesty that he gave him, all the people, the nations, and languages trembled and feared before him, whom he would he slew, and whom he would he kept alive, and whom he would he set up, and whom he would he put down. And I believe in the sovereignty of God, and I believe that God is working in our nation, and uh, we have yet to see what, what God will do. I am going to read from a passage that's familiar to you. I have never preached this message before. In fact, I, I prepared it just a few weeks ago. I'm kind of like the old man that was seen sitting on a college campus white hair, had his notebook and his Bible and some other book and someone went by him and said, what are you doing? He said, I'm preparing for the ministry. So I still do that at my house. I'm preparing for the ministry. And uh, the Lord recently gave me a couple of messages. I preached one this morning. Here's the other one tonight. But I'm reading from Luke chapter 15. And um, we know that in this chapter, there's the parable of the lost sheep, there's the parable of the lost coin, and there's the parable of the lost son. And I want us to look at the parable of the lost son, and I'm going to take a feature from it that maybe you haven't heard preached, I don't know. Um, I think I shall just read from 11 all the way to 32, familiar 
familiar story, but uh, perhaps we need the background. And he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me, and he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with the riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with a husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose, and he came to his father. But when he was a great way off, his father saw him, and had compassion, and ran, and fell on his neck, and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found, and began to be merry. Now his elder brother was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard much music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry. And he would not go in, therefore he came... Uh, therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years I do serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I may make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured the living with the harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost, and is faint. Let's bow our heads for prayer. We thank you, Lord, for your word, for the instruction we receive from it. We ask now that your spirit will be our teacher, and that we will go away from this service knowing that we have received something of help and benefit for our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, some messages that we preach talk about a cure, perhaps some talk about prevention. I'm not sure what I would label this. We thank God for the prodigal that came home. We thank God for that story. But there's a part of this story that's sad, isn't there? And the part that is sad is when the, the uh, elder brother went with his... Uh, situation of saying, but dad, this guy embarrassed the family. This guy squandered the family resources. He's made a fool of himself and made a fool of all of us, and now you're celebrating. He had a problem, didn't he? 
I'd like to call it the uh, elder, elder son syndrome. And probably someone will correct me after service and say that's not how you're supposed to use that word. But you know, that could be a problem in our lives if we're not careful. Um, I'd like to use several illustrations that I know about that are related to this. Um, in the Caribbean, on an island at least 2,500 miles from where we are, I witnessed with my own eyes on three occasions the negative treatment of visitors in the little mission church that we were working in as young missionaries. Once there came to service two neighbor boys, they just lived just about 25 feet from the church. Might have been a little further than that. But they came to church without shoes. And their feet were dirty. Surprise. And uh, some older person stopped them at the door and told them that they had to leave because they didn't have shoes on and they were dirty. And it would have made me feel like I wanted to leave too. I uh, had another incident where there was a middle-aged woman. She attended services, and she stayed uh, through the whole service. But as she was going out, a couple of the ladies uh, got on either side of her and began to pinch her bare arms because she didn't have sleeves. And... Uh, they told her not to come back if she was like that. I don't remember whether she did or not. Another instance, uh, I befriended a young man who worked at the ice plant. You see, we lived in the Caribbean before there was much electricity and uh, we did have a refrigerator. It was a kerosene refrigerator and they sort of work. And it, we sort of had a little tiny freezer compartment about like a, what we used to call an overnight chest or something, just a little thing, you know. Well, it didn't work very well in the very hottest of weather, so you just go buy ice occasionally if you wanted ice. Well, I befriended the guy that worked there, and he came on a Wednesday night. I was so glad to see him. He was such a pleasant person. But one dear sister stood and took a text on him, that's what they would say in the Caribbean, and turned toward him and began to lambast young people because they weren't living for God and they weren't attending church. And what are you supposed to do, Brother, Brother Sankey, when that happens? You know, I didn't have all the experience to know how you how you intercede in those things. And I just suddenly thought, I need to sing a chorus. But I didn't get it started soon enough. Too much damage was already done. And you know, that uh, young fellow never came back. And uh, he was always friendly to me, always cordial to me, but he never came back. I'm not really surprised. You know, many live the pinched, pouting lives of the older brother in the prodigal narrative. Maybe, I don't think, I don't think I'm preaching to people that are that way, but you know, this is something for us to consider. Something to say, God help me with. Well, why can't those with the elder son syndrome celebrate? Let's consider three things here. Uh, First of all, they're concerned about propriety. Uh, thus, they become Pharisees. They're like the Pharisee in Luke 18, 11. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. And what did he pray? Oh, God, I thank thee that I'm not as other men are. Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, even like this public. Well, those who have the elder syndrome are concerned about propriety to the point that they may even give a great show of piety. 
They may be very orthodox and obedient. They may be very dutiful and diligent. They, and from all appearances, they have everything together. They attend church regularly. They show up to volunteer. But mercy and graciousness only extends to those with equal propriety. Uh, those, I believe, with the elder brother syndrome uh, are concerned about propriety to the point of becoming extreme in the application of principles. Um, I think you know me well enough by now that you know that I'm not trying to justify going off on the other side of the coin, but we need to have some graciousness. On one, on one occasion, I happened to be in a service and there was an altar worker working with a man, working very diligently with him, and uh, the man was there praying, and uh, he was unclear about his standing with God, but the altar worker was so concerned about his doctrinal viewpoint that he was giving this long lecture about how his doctrinal viewpoint was getting in, it was getting in the way, I understood that. But uh, the brother called me and said, would you come and pray here? And I just felt the Lord led me to bypass that discussion totally. I said, my brother, I said, um, why don't you just confess to God what you know is between you and assurance and victory? Just forget this, I didn't say that, but in my mind he said, forget this doctrinal thing. Let's get right with God. And uh, he prayed, and not long after he had victory. How do we, uh, how often we complicate things when we really don't need to complicate them? I think we have done that, and if, uh, it's, it's been said. You know, those who with, with the elder brother syndrome are often controlled by pessimism. Uh, thus, they set limits on those who are reclaimed or recently converted. When the wayward come penitently home, sometimes they say, I'll give him a chance. And, and some of the crowds say, I, I'll, I'll give him a month. Well, some may say, well, look at them now. They were raised in the church. They know better. Do they? I, I read my Bible that people, when they turn from the light, that light becomes darkness. I can't, I can't comprehend how people get from from being raised in a holiness home and making a big left turn and they get so far away they don't, they don't even know where they are. I don't understand that. But I do know this, that the light can even shine in those hearts. And uh, we need to remember that even if people were raised in a church and even if they do know better, darkness has come into their lives and only Christ can turn that light on. Mm -hmm. We may even, uh, if we have the elder brother syndrome, we may say, I've never known anyone who got involved in that kind of sin to ever be truly delivered. You know, that's limiting God a great deal. Right. Whatever, whatever you put in that. Right. Someone may say, well, he was involved with. You fill in the blank. There's no hope for him. Thank God for grace. Thank God for transforming power. In a place a long way from here, on a Friday morning, Bernadine came into the Good Friday service. Uh, she seemed a bit cautious as she came in. She sat near the back of the sanctuary. I was preaching a typical Good Friday message that particular Good Friday. And at the end of the message, I opened the altar for prayer and Bernadine came forward and, and uh, expressed a desire to be saved and she prayed and 
She rose and her face shone. And she returned Sunday. And uh, as far as I know, no one gave her any instructions. But she came and she looked like a holiness lady. And she entered in the service and uh, she, she gave her testimony how the Lord had changed her. And she told me that, she told me that I now lock my gate at night because I do not let men enter into my yard. You can put all that together. Thank God, though, for the transforming power of Jesus Christ. She, she became a worker in that church. God can change lives. Those who are controlled by pessimism set limits on God's power. Often they abandon any thought of a transformation. A pessimism is an excuse not to pray, and it keeps us from praying. We may say, well, why should I pray? It's not going to do any good. Well, God can and does redeem. I know that because I've seen him do that. I had nothing to do with uh, the, the uh, transformation of a, of a man that I pastored in, in another place where uh, he, he had been a druggie. He had had an awful life of sin, but there were some men who were so concerned about this man, they kept going to the door and knocking. Come, come, come to church, and so on. And he came, and his life was completely changed. And, and that uh, dear brother would often testify and he would thank God for how God had saved him from an awful life of sin. But you know, he never gave a catalog of what was involved. I knew about it. He told me about it. He said, I don't think these children and young people need to hear about that. And he said, I'm always rejoicing whenever I hear a little child stand and testify. He said, I thank God they don't have to carry the scars of sin in their lives as I have. But I praise God that he can redeem people like that. You know, those who are controlled by pessimism often set limits on helpfulness. Pessimism gives way to abandon, abandoning the returned prodigal, the new Christian, or the struggling Christian. Just going to leave them alone, sort of like you would if you saw someone fall on a sidewalk and walk away. We have an obligation. We need to help when we can and as much as we can. Those with the elder brother syndrome are, are careless in respect to their position. They're trapped in the thinking of superiority. What's the difference between your status and the status of someone who's a drunk or a drug? It's a thing called grace. If it were not for the grace of God, we have no idea where any of us would be tonight. We could have been at the very lowest rung of sin, but thank God for his grace. Thank God for his grace. If it weren't for grace, we could only imagine, but thank God for his grace. What happens when the prodigal returns to the father? Mercy is extended and grace is applied. And you know what? When that prodigal returns, it's not the time to recite the 40 years of life that you're carrying around, or the 60, or however many. I'm in that category. Oh, love will help us build a bridge to a person who is far from where you and I are in our spiritual walk. Love can help us do that. Love will give us reason to be heard. The love will prompt the returned prodigal to ask questions about matters of faith. And that's the time to give good biblical answers. If, if you love and demonstrate it, you will be given opportunity to give encouragement. 
I say amen? Somebody is asleep. Okay. Well, I believe that the elder, those with the elder or brother or syndrome, they are those who are careless in respect to their position and are trapped into thinking that because of their long tenure, they're exempt from failure. I'm not in heaven yet. You're not either. And uh, an older man once said to me something like this. He said, oh, he said, I could never be tempted like that. I said, now, wait a minute. Aren't you still alive? Don't you still have red blood coursing through your veins? Yes, sir. He said, you're right. I could be. And we, we need never to think that we're beyond temptation and being tripped up. And we don't want to have that superiority come. But we made it thus far by God's grace, and that's the way we're going to make it. Those who are careless in respect to their position are trapped into the feeling of entitlement. Nobody celebrates me. I haven't wandered afar. The prodigal returns at a party stage. Let me just tell you something, young people. I may have already said this in this church. If I did, it's a privilege of an old man to repeat himself. But you know, when I was going to Bible school, there were some people that God had drawn out of deep sin, and they had gotten right with God. And their lives were transformed. It was amazing what God had done. You know what happened to me? I was saved when I was eight. As far as I know, I was saved the first time the Lord talked to me about it. As far as I know. That's been a while ago. And the devil would say, see, you don't have any testimony. You, you didn't come out of deep sin. The temptation, you know what the enemy, how he construes that. You know, you'd have a lot more dramatic testimony if you'd go get drunk or try something like that. Don't do it. Just like that gentleman that I pastored, he said, I am so thankful every time I hear a young person testify because I know they don't have to carry the scars of sin. You may not feel like anybody celebrates you because you were saved at an early age, but thank God for his grace. You know, um, some of you, I know several of you would know Rick Jones. Rick Jones and I were together at, at a funeral, a funeral of a pastor. That pastor was a friend of mine. And Rick had pastored the, those, the children of the pastor who had just passed away. Those children had moved a long ways from the Christian practices of their parents. And Rick told me something at the graveside that just has stuck with me for a long time. He said, Lonnie, this family needs people like you so that they will have someone to come back to when they want to come back to God. We need to think about that. We need to be those people. God has called us really to be patient, passionate teachers of truth. Many of you here, thank God, many of you here were born in Christian homes and you were privileged to go to Christian schools with Christian curriculum and you attended church regularly and, you, and accepted Christ in your youth and you have a storehouse of experience and knowledge to impart. And you know God wants to use us to help the backslider that's coming home. He wants to help us to help those who are recently converted. And uh, some of those people may never come to the measure of life that we have, but some of them will surpass us in diligent study and strong zeal. And some of those to whom we minister will have a far greater influence than we have ever had ourselves. And that's one of the things that makes me rejoice. I've, I've preached to people and talked to people and had a part in their lives and they've taken the, 
the ball a lot further than I could ever take it. And I'm thankful for that. Let's, um, let's celebrate the return prodigal and let's enthusiastically encourage him or her. And let's carefully uh, act to the Spirit's direction when we disseminate truth. Something that's become a burden to me recently, and this is just an aside here at the end, but I've been concerned about the children of God's people, holy people, that they've made mistakes and they've turned from God and so on. And I've, I've become aware of, of some families where that's happened. And I believe God still works in the hearts of people like that. And we need to pray to the end that they will come home, come home to him. And uh, I would invite us to stand at the end of this service. I don't know what God may have done with this little message, but let's, let's just have a prayer for people just like I've talked about. You know them. We're not mentioning them. We just want to pray for them. Dear Lord, we know that there are many men and women who have gone through the halls of churches and Christian schools and they have sat around the family altars in uh, fine Christian homes and many of many of those unfortunately have turned made left turns in their lives and have, have gone far from where uh, they know they could be and should be we pray, oh God, that if you will ever put us in a place where we can have influence in their lives, that we will have the influence and the love and the compassion that we need to have. And we're just praying in a general way for people that we know who have young people out there that have made huge mistakes in their lives. Give help and hope to the praying parents, grandparents, and, and we pray, Lord, that you will help us to remember that your power is the same to transform lives today as it has ever been. We ask now that you will dismiss this service with your blessings and favor, and may we this week be a light for a sin-darkened world. May we in some way encourage someone to, to move toward God and we will praise you for all that you do in Jesus' name.